All right, in this question we are uh, given, see, wood products, company produces paper and newsprint, standard bond, glossy fosh, finish styles, and each in one and four weights, thicknesses, and either in white, yellow, pink, or powder blue. How many different kinds of paper are available? Okay, so this is still in our probability unit, so let's uh, take a look at the formula chart here for a second and kind of think, well, where would I have seen something like this? Um, and so this, uh, to me, uh, this feels a lot like a shopping list. Like we're just listing out um, all the different possibilities that could happen. And so uh, it kind of fits under this category, except we're not dealing with uh, the same thing repeatedly. So if it was talking about uh, letters uh, in a code or di 10 digits in a code, then this would be where that uh, arrangement thing would, would kick in. Uh, but we do have uh, this one right here, the fundamental counting principle, whose job is to deal with uh, what, what I described in class as the shopping list problem. Just feels like a laundry list of things to do. Uh, and so what this formula has us do is just multiply the individual events together. So in this case, um, how many, let's see, we have uh, paper, so newsprint standard, glossy, so that's three there. And what about weights? Weights, we have four, even though we don't know what they are. And we have four colors. Let's try that again. And so in the spreadsheet, uh, that's what we're typing here. Uh, what uh, what are the uh, outcomes for each event? So three, four, four. And so when I multiply that all together, I get 48. So there's 48 total options. All right, this next question, uh, we're told credit card balances uh, increase at a rate of 15% a year. Honestly, there's two different routes we could go with this. So we could go back to the finance spreadsheet uh, and we could look at it in that term uh, idea. Uh, we actually, the, the last topic we covered was uh, exponential growth and decay. And so I'm gonna instead pull up that spreadsheet. And what I would highly recommend is you wanna look at all the different skills connected to what the spreadsheet does. So remind yourself of how this would work with double time, half time, linear models and general exponential. Uh, and so in this question, uh, we are not given uh, half-life or double life. So this would fit under the general exponential category. Uh, we are told, uh, let's see, let's see we're told 15% a year, but we're said if the balance is 95,000 this year, what will it be in 15 years? So we're told the beginning amount, we wanna know a future amount. So we wanna solve for what we would call the end in our last unit. So we're using this first set of boxes here. So the starting amount was 9,500. Uh, the rate is 15%. I get a little reminder here that if it's growth, it's a positive R. If it's decay, it's a negative R. So uh, we are increasing, so that's positive 0.15. And time we're looking at is 15 years. Uh, so there we go. Uh, the answer to this one is seventy-seven thousand three hundred two and nine cents. So I'm going to take a picture of that. Just kind of let it sit there. All right. So that's that one. Now the reason why I wanted you to review uh, all the things that that spreadsheet can do is in this case we see the phrase doubling time and we see the word factor. So we wanna think back to, well, where have I seen that before? And so if I access uh, the double time tab, I can see that this corner right here uh, gives me a formula and it allows me to type in the time, the double time, and it will tell me what, the factor, both exponential form and just how many times bigger it was. So if, uh, I don't know if I can get this all, oh, maybe I can get it on the screen at the same time. All right, so we're talking 112 years, uh, given a double time of 14. And so in exponential form, that'd be two to the eighth power or 256 times bigger. Uh, I know in my math lab, they switch back and forth between uh, both different types of answers. So 
I will give you full credit for either form. All right, so in this question, um, we're actually asked to do a couple of things. So first thing is generate a, a general scatter plot. Uh, so remind you again that Excel is our friend on something like this. Uh, so I'm going to pull up what I like to call a naked spreadsheet, just an empty space. And I'm going to type in these numbers. So one, seven, three, oh, sorry, three, six, five, four. Now I realize that you can just plot points, and so you don't need uh, a nice tool for this. Uh, but if you remember when we covered the scatter plot unit, uh, there was a nice drawing feature uh, that will generate an image for us. Okay, so, sorry, kind of review myself where to find this. So if we go to insert uh, and we go to what looks like a scatter plot, uh, we actually can generate that image right there. And so that's a quick snap. Now you can just go plot points is honestly what you can do, but that will also get the message across. Okay, and then once we've got a picture drawn, then we can use that to answer questions. So uh, how many milligrams remain after two hours? So if I go down here and go up, I can see that uh, there's a straight line-ish around there. And so it looks like it's about 6.5. Uh, milligrams and then also if I go up here I see that uh, one and two is, or two is halfway between one and three so I should go halfway between seven and six to also get my 6.5 uh, and then how many hours uh, for three milligrams so if I go from the three over so it looks like it's not five but between five and six so maybe five and a half would be a good estimate. Uh, and similarly, if I come up here, this time I'm looking for the second half of the ordered pair, and it looks like three hits between the five and the six, so split the difference, 5.5 hours. All right, in this question, we are asked to analyze a linear model. Uh, so let's actually pull up that uh, spreadsheet and use its resources to answer this question. So let me first get that pulled up here. Okay, so we're gonna kind of uh, review how this spreadsheet works. Uh, so first I need to identify an independent dependent variable. I get that from the chart. So I can kind of see it, the, the independent, it would be time in terms of days. And the dependent would be uh, concentration in terms of parts per million. And so uh, if I want to make sure I understand correctly, we're saying that the number of days uh, determines the concentration of a particular drug as opposed to the other way, which doesn't make any sense. So we've got this set up correctly. We've identif pro appropriately identified our independent dependent variables. So next up is to uh, read the chart and fill in two uh, points of information. So I can see here at the beginning of zero days, it's at three parts per million. So I'm gonna type that in, zero days, three parts per million. Uh, and then I just need another good spot. Now when I say a good spot, I mean, I'm gonna look along this line here and I'm gonna look for where it crosses at a grid point uh, as opposed to right here. So I wouldn't want to use, for example, four, but six would be a good point. Eight would not, 10 would not, but 12 would. If I go down here, I see the number 12. So let's go back and use, uh, that didn't really matter, let's use six. So at six days, I have four parts per million. So six days, four parts per million. Just realized that was a little off screen there. Okay, put that back on the screen. And so I can see the, uh, the slope is 0.166. And now I, I kind of get a picture what the graph looks like. And that actually should be close to what I see. And it is. Um, <coughs> even so, now if I needed to extend it on, I could go back in and, and pick a different point. Could go pick, say, uh, 18 and 6. And I would just see a longer version of that. But with this box over up here, I'm actually able to answer all the questions that I need 
So let's go back here. Uh, it says create a linear model, linear equation that models this data. So if I come down here, uh, I can see a symbolic representation of that, uh, which I can then fill in, or I can just define it myself. But we are talking about the concentration of parts per million. So let me write, start writing this out here. So our concentration, oops, concentration in parts per million. Well, what does that equal? That equals three plus, because our initial amount would be three, uh, and our slope is uh, 0.167 plus 0.167 uh, time in terms of days. So if you tell me uh, the days, I can tell you uh, the, how much concentration there is. So the rate of change in this case is that 0.167 uh, go back to our spreadsheet here, uh, concentration per, so parts per million per day. Okay, uh, by how much does the concentration drop over the space of three days? So, uh, I can either look at that, uh, or I can come in here and I can say, well, if I compare, uh, say, day zero uh, to day three, I can see that it has increased uh, 3.5, or the value of it is 3.5, more specifically. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, one way to do this is it th uh, when we started, uh, we started at 3, so at day 3 we're at 3.5, so we went up 0.5. Um, or if my change is independent as 3, that means my change in dependent, uh, just realized there's a misspelling there, but oh well, uh, would be <laughs> 0.5. Um, or the other way to do it is just graphically go, if I uh, go over three, so if I go over three here, then I also visually I can see that I'm going over uh, 0.5 there. So I don't know how many ways you want to look at this. Uh, over a space of three days, the concentration changes by 0.5 parts per million.